Arguably, the most special hypercar of the moment is about to be delivered here at my garage at the Schmuseum. Hi guys, I'm Schmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now, over time, we've had some pretty special cars passing through this place. Of course, even some of the Schmi reveals, the 4GT, my Zenvo, we'll have an update on that in a moment. But the car coming today is unlike no other. Not only is it incredibly rare to begin with, but the specification of this particular example is going to blow your minds. So at some point, it's coming in, it's been at Topaz Detailing for paint protection film to be installed, and it's coming over here to be delivered today, and I cannot wait to show you around. To date, we have welcomed some unbelievable cars through this shutter door. In fact, if we go back to before all of this was built, before we had the grandstand, before we had the racetrack, I think even before we had the car lifts in, Zenvo came with the factory blue TSRS. That was the day I was talking with them, locking in the final details for my car, which we'll have an update with shortly, as I said. We've also had my friend Mike, Shin Mike Yin, coming to visit with his Pagani Huayra BC, the first Pagani to come here. The Lee Collection guys stopped by with a lineup of mega cars, Senna V12 Speedster, Mirage GT, and a Bugatti Chiron Supersport. And the cars were parked on the painted roadway, looking spectacular. Plus recently, Tommy from Super Futura, Koenigsegg UK, came by with the first UK customer Yesco to be driven on the road, and we took it out for a run. We've seen some epic cars, but arguably today's is gonna top them all. Very shortly, we're going to be welcoming this car in through that entrance, although probably I would say I'm loading it inside because the weather outside is atrocious. It is absolutely torrential rain. Now the car in question belongs to a very close friend of mine who has actually been here to visit before with another hypercar, the Koenigsegg Agera RS known as Naraya. That was the first Koenigsegg to come here, also delivered via Super Vatira as it happens. And that was just phenomenal. And there are some things about the spec of that car which link to the one that is about to be here. In fact, when he was here with that, we took it out for a drive with the Ford GT as well. Oh, good memories. I actually joined as well for the original first event that car attended seven years ago. Time flies by, but get ready for this because I am excited. This thing is special that's about to turn up. Let's start with a quick update on the missing Schmimobile, the only missing European-based Schmimobile currently, the Zenvo, because of course the Ford GT is now back, the Dark Horse is in the United States, but the Zenvo is not here. We have the 1 to 18 model in exactly the same specification, which looks super cool, currently taking rest on my table football that I need to decide where it goes. And this is a convenient table top for the table football, the table football table that will find a new home at some point. Also, completely coincidentally, I promise, I might be wearing my Heeltread Zenvo Schmimobile socks right now, which you can get from Heeltread, of course. I didn't realize that, I just grabbed the next pair on the top. So where is the car? Well, it is, of course, still in Denmark. It is in Prastu, Zenvo's HQ. It went out there after the tour to America. It basically came back here for about five minutes, went straight over to the continent, up to Denmark, to have a full service, maintenance check, nut and bolt check, to go through it for thoroughly, having driven about 4,000 miles with the car. That's all been done, and it's basically ready to come back. So why isn't it here already? Well, aside from the fact that it's pretty full, even now with a arriving that we need to put somewhere, we'll discuss that one in a moment as well. It's basically easier for me to keep it out there because I'm about to depart on another mega road trip. I'm gonna be away for a while, so it's not gonna be used. So it'd just be sitting here not doing anything. And while it's at the factory, they might get ideas, come up with new things. When you're working with very boutique, bespoke, hand-built cars, there are always clever ideas going through the engineers' minds, and I love it, I love seeing what they come up with. So the car is out there, I might even drive up there to go and see it soon. That's certainly something on my mind. So for the time being, we are left looking at and enjoying the 1 to 18 scale model of the TSRS until it's gonna be back here. And of course, as soon as the weather gets a little bit better, that is gonna be the plan. So for the moment, I'm going to carefully pop that on top of there. It'd be very cool to get a 1 to 8 scale one of those. They don't currently make them, maybe in the future. That would be really awesome. So I need to make a quick call, see when they're gonna arrive, and let's welcome this new hypercar here at the Museum. If my plans for this work out, what we need to do 
is to move the SF90 later, to pull that out of the halo bay, because the whole intention with this space is to really show off cars, in particular visiting hypercars. In fact, halo bay on. Ta-da! With the lighting, it looks amazing. Obviously, we painted it the chemise blue, we've got the logo at the back, we've got all of the plates from my previous cars, but I think the one that's arriving today will look extra good in here, especially with the glass looking through from the lounge. It's a mega spot. So we'll unload it and figure out the moving later on, but probably pop it in there for a stunning view. We've had a few of the Shmi mobiles go through. Always looks lovely. Charging ports at the back as well, because the car that's arriving needs to be plugged in. I am not taking chances with this one. And uh, yeah, see how it looks. Well, look what we've got here. Trailer reversing in, literally dripping with rain. It is pouring outside. But uh, we'll get this straightened up and then it's going to be time to open up the trailer and show you what is inside this thing and what is getting me so excited about it. It is time. Look at this. Do you know what? I'm going to hold it until we see the, uh, the full reveal from here. You've probably just worked out exactly what's inside. This is big. Let's do this. Check that out. This is Arnamos, the Aston Martin Valkyrie in Arnamos purple tint carbon fiber with the hand painted gold accents and details. Just wait until you see this, take it out. And that, by the way, is the noise of the V8 Vantage so that we can open the side door to have some better access to it. Oh, wow. Just look at this. We're going to go over all of the details. One interesting thing, though, is when it's in transit, it actually lowers and drops on the suspension. So obviously when it gets started, it will sit back up again. Oh my goodness. I mean, look at the intricacy of all of the details. Look at this, the color. This is unreal. It's gonna be time to get this started. Steering wheel on. We've actually got a few things to take a look at back here too, but there is a complete process to it in terms of powering it up, waking the car up, and then eventually getting it started. Um, back here, check this out, the flight case and the steering wheel transport box. We're going to be hearing this in a moment. It just takes a moment for the car to get everything ready. Fire up the 6.5 litre Cosworth V12. Soft close on the doors and a whole lot of gearbox noise coming. Wait for this. That is the most unusual noise off the electric motor, primes the V12, and then the sound, right, ride height is presumably lifting up, there we go, lift system, actually has a great lift system, and then this is going to be coming on out and touching down here in this museum in a moment. Wait for the colour of this as it comes through my days. Look at that. Look at that car. That is not a normal car. That is absolutely absurd. I think we're going to try and spin it around to park it in place. What is really interesting with this is that after you've had it running, you effectively need to make sure the battery is full before you switch it off. Look at this though. Look at the tint. Look at the fleck in this exposed carbon fiber bodywork. All of the gold detailing. There are so many design details that we need to go over with this thing. I cannot believe there is a Valkyrie here at the Schmuseum. I mean, look at it. This is the height of human automotive engineering. This is the peak that we see in the world right now, this car. I am super excited as well to take a look at these, the flight cases and their contents. But we will get to that later and see exactly what comes inside these things. Thank you ever so much. Those are cool. Those are really cool. I mean, when buying a car like a Valkyrie, you would certainly hope for some very cool things like this to come with it. And look at it there, it's tiny. It's absolutely tiny compared to even the Ford GT pretty much anything else that's around us. Before we start pouring over all of the details of this thing and opening up those boxes, I've actually been around this car pretty much from the beginning of its story. If you go back to July 2016 and the introduction of what was then 
AM RB001. The F1 drivers from Red Bull, the collaboration between Aston Martin and Red Bull, their first project together, Adrian Newey behind all of the scenes. But then it was presented in production form in March 2017 at the Geneva Motor Show, when later that year, I then got to see the interior for the first time at the Dubai Motor Show in November of 2017. The AMR Pro was launched the following spring at Geneva 2018 in March of that year, before a few years later, I finally got the first opportunity to hop on board at Millbrook in the Valkyrie prototype to experience it with Darren Turner, to soak in the whole noise, drama and excitement of this car to understand more of what it was about. Then the next month, they actually introduced the Spider out at Monterey Car Week, presenting that on the lawns at Pebble Beach. Before at Laguna Seca in summer 2022, I found myself on board an AMR Pro, the track version with Andy Prio, and that rewrote the rule book in terms of my understanding of a fast car. The cameras couldn't even handle the G-forces, the vibrations, the sound, the whole excitement of it. A couple of months later, so still about 18 months ago at Topaz Detailing, I went along to see the Sunburst Yellow car, one of the first customer cars, which was there for paint protection film and poured over all of the details of that at the time. And then you join us here today with my friend Passon's car that is here again, that has been to Topaz. So full paint protection film, which on a car like this is an absolute no brainer because if you don't, just think of the aero and the stones and everything that's getting pinged through the bodywork. And as I look at it now, you can actually see that it's already starting to sit back down. It raises when it's running and then when it's parked, it just sags and drops down and makes the Ford GT, which is normally a pretty low car, look really tall. So to have gone from, well, Nearly eight years ago, seeing AMRB001 for the first time, never would I have expected eight years later, this would be my garage and my friend's car would be sat right here. But here we are, somehow. I'm coming over to the GT8 because there's something I need to share with you that actually connects this car to that specific Valkyrie, which, and I like my cool stories, but I personally think makes this even more special that it's here today. Because when I went up to Gaydon in late 2016, in fact, a couple of days before Christmas, for the final inspection of this, effectively the last part of the Road to GT8 series, where the then CEO, Dr. Andy Palmer, did the look over of this before we installed the carbon fiber wings badge on the bonnet. That was the same day that I had gone up to the Aston Martin factory with Passin in the Agera RS Naraya, because as you might have guessed, it was to sign off or to start really everything with this, to do first renders of the specification. I think a few things with the contracts, but basically line up this car, this, this one, the one that's here now, that kind of started on the day that that basically finished in terms of being built. How cool is that, that it goes full circle and comes together and they're now here well, not literally side by side, but in the same garage. Well, here it is then. Let's talk about this. And I've got the key to it right here. The Aston Martin wings at the end, currently in its carbon style leather pouch. But this is a car that really, like I said earlier, rewrites the rule book in terms of human engineering at this point. There are so many details and I want to pick out some of my favorite things about it. And I guess if we start around here, you'll notice the central windscreen wiper and of course, that is carbon fiber, saving weight everywhere possible. A single wiper is of course lighter than having two, especially with the very tight cockpit that this has and the shape of the glass to be able to work around it. Down at the front, you have no doubt heard before that this badge is actually underneath the lacquer, incredibly thin and of course negligible weight, again, keeping it as light as possible. In fact, even down here, and yes, we do have to have license plates, number plates here in the United Kingdom, the plinth for this, is made again from carbon fiber, blending in almost down here to the front splitter, which is very much mounted like the F1 car. We're gonna take a look at that and some of the comparisons shortly. Come round to the side, little known detail. This is where your fuel filler cap is. That pops up and open and it's tucked in right underneath there with yes, 99 run recommended, but it can run on 95, very helpful. So you're not gonna be having any issues like well, many of the supercars that need 97 or 98 at a minimum. Come round towards the back, obviously on the little fin there is where you've got cameras and things to help you be able to see at least something. 
And then down here, this is actually magnetized, this cover, which is where you plug it in, as we will do a little bit later on, that pops back into place and of course closes it up. But I mean, look at those Venturi tunnels that run underneath. You can literally lie under there. In fact, I'm gonna try that later on. I'm gonna take my shoes off and see if I can get under there and completely disappear underneath the Valkyrie. That's fascinating, actually. You, can, you could hide two people underneath this thing. This new design for the tail lamps, the way that this is finished and all of this detailing. I mean, we talked about the metallic fleck in the purple tint carbon, but the way all of this detailing is crafted and goes around the car. I mean, look at this on those aero boards that run down the side. We've got the cameras out here as well with your screens inside the car. The shapes and the way it's all just open and exposed and everything going on. And the aero work that's got into this thing is unlike any other car in the world. To open it, the button is just under here. Press that, it pops the gull wings. Those open up and then you look inside. And of course, this is a right-hand drive car. Even this in gold as well. VIN 123 of number 150. And then look at the inside of it. The purple Alcantara with the matching gold details, the embroidery, the stitching, the Animos text there on the racing harnesses, and the view in the cameras of the cars behind as well with the main screen. And we'll be taking a full look through that very shortly. This is, unlike anything else, this thing is the literal meaning of spaceship. I mean, look at this, all of the cutouts absolutely everywhere on it. Close that delicately back down. It does have soft close. I quite like that. No opening windows. If you want to go through a drive through you need to open your door to take whatever it is back inside the car. Ah, oh, just this thing sitting here. This is from another world. I am currently taking off my shoes to take a step inside this. Being brand new and, well, literally no miles and in need of protecting it, and the fact that you have to stand on the seat, this is the best way to go. There's no easy way to climb into a Valkyrie. You basically have to just kind of step over the tub. You've got obviously the carbon sill, which you can put some weight on, and then basically, leg straight, slide yourself down, and wow, it is cozy inside here. So, steering wheel, which comes in one of those cases. Actually, you don't need to pull anything. That just slides in. There we go, clicks in place. Oh my gosh, sitting inside this is crazy. So, one press starts to wake it up. That's like your first stage of power. There's then a second press, which turns on full ignition, I believe. There we go. Starts to make all sorts of crazy noises. You then need to give it a moment, let everything fully enable, let everything wake up. Obviously it's just been run to take it out of the trailer, but these are very, I wanna say delicate. You need to look after them. You need to make sure they're all good. So in here, if you come and take a closer look, I've obviously got the view of the side mirrors or cameras, computer screens, and then I've got the view straight backwards from the shark fin camera behind me. But it is tight and it is snug. The screen on here in front of me it's basically telling us, yep, that's all good, just that the door is open. So I think it's foot on the brake and then press the button. And like I said earlier, it starts the electric motor first and then fires the V12. So we've got full battery. Let's give this a go. It's such a crazy feeling inside here. You feel the vibrations, you feel everything. This is absolutely crazy vehicle which shows me the battery charge. You need to make sure it's at 100% before you stop it. <laughs> While it's running, I'm going to show you a little bit more in here if you can hear anything. I mean, look around. Look at this cabin. These are your door grab pulls there and on this side. The screen here actually has quite a lot of information. The rev counter goes up initially, as you can see, to 8,000, but 11,100 when it's fully running. This is just phenomenal. <laughs> Indicators, lift system, your controls around here, lights, traction control selector. ESP, TC, currently on 10. 
that's how you adjust it up and down. My word, look at this. Look at like the raw carbon down here in the footwell. I'm just hoping you can hear me over the noise of this car. Well, the charge is now at 97%. Oh, silence again. <laughs> it's so loud. And of course, you then pop off the steering wheel, clip it from the back. You can go and pop that away in the case or put it there. And I'm going to try and work out how to step out, which I think is probably the reverse. Feet back to the seat, kind of swing up, perch on here, swing out and we're good. Oh man. <laughs> this thing is absolute madness. I've now got the steering wheel, but I want to take a look at these packages. So I've not even opened them yet. You're coming along to discover this with me at the same time. You twist that, release it. We'll twist this one the same, release that. And inside, oh, take a look at that. So cool. So this is where the keys go. There's a plaque. I'm um, not sure what the different parts of it all are. Obviously, the steering wheel would go right in there. This is so beautifully presented. And then underneath, if we lift this up, what do we have under here? Oh, that's where the charger and things would be, which we've actually got out at the moment. And I'll show you that in a moment. <laughs> Your warning triangle. Of course, needed in some uh, different countries, depending where you are. But that would be added weight to have it permanently in the car. Close this back up for the moment make sure that tucks away and then this little tool also pop this delicately on there because this is the big one i have no idea what is inside this case this flight case no idea at all right now so let's open it up ready let's see let's find out whoa what is this oh this is a different seat Wow, that's cool. This is literally a different seat. Can I lift it out? Oh my goodness, that weighs nothing. Is that a smaller seat for it? So we've got the two seats and obviously the various frames and attachments inside there. I don't want to take them all out because it might be hard to get it back in. That is crazy. Seriously, even with the pads, that's like, I, I don't know an exact number, but maybe two or three kilos. Is that six or seven pounds? For the seat, for a different size, if you want to have a smaller or wider seat in the car. Wow. Let's just go back in here as well. Put the headrest end in first. That's really cool. Like I said, I didn't know what was going to be inside here. I love this. This is really special. This is all part of the experience with a car like this. It's just not normal. This kind of exciting stuff that's presented with it and the way it's all boxed, packaged, and delivered. Mega! I love it. Unpacking this stuff is as exciting as the car. I'm incredibly jealous of my friend Passin right now because this is, this is so cool. I also promised that I would show you some of the things that I find fascinating between this and my, I know 90s, so gosh, nearly 30 year old F1, in this case, show car, the Williams FW19. This was 1997. This was a Villeneuve car effectively, although with narrow track, it's a little bit of a Frankenstein monster, but championship winner from back at the time of this type of car. And take note, for example, of what's going on here. And remember that the Valkyrie was effectively designed and the engineering led by Adrian Newey, who is one of F1's greats in terms of designing and engineering these cars. But I find it very interesting to see the exposed components, everything going on here, control arms, and the way it's all connected. And then to come and look here, where it's basically the same. Yes, there's more support and more rigidity, but the way that it's all mounted to the carbon tub, to that teardrop cabin that you have effectively inside everything going on is really interesting. Also at the front, obviously nose cones, I mean, they're attached onto the main monocoque, but then the front nose or splitter is hanging down from the front. And it's exactly the same here. If you actually look underneath, it's mounted in the middle behind this plate plinth. I actually haven't noticed the plate plinth is shaped like an aero fin itself. It's not just a front piece. It actually goes quite far back like a wing to direct the airflow, to manage the airflow. This, the details here, the more you look at it, the more you start to notice. And obviously it gets narrower through the body to help with the airflow coming over it. And at the back, double layer wing, 
the way this is positioned and mounted with the different elements. And I do kind of want to crawl under there. So this might be my opportunity on the floor of my garage. I'm going to do it. I'm actually going to do this and give it a go to show you quite how ridiculous these tunnels at the back of this thing are. Let me pop my shoes off again. Because under here, you can literally see a Shmi 150 disappearing into a Valkyrie like this. It's crazy. Look at this. Go under the diffuser. Hopefully I'm not going to burn myself on anything. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Yeah. The things you can do with one of these. I could actually get further under here. I, I'm blown away by this car. I'm absolutely blown away by it. I mean, I would literally be blown away if somebody started this right now. That would be unpleasant. Now that a Valkyrie has basically given birth to a Shmi 150, we're going to quickly move on. <laughs> the name of the car. I think in English you'd probably call it Animos because of the literal way to pronounce that. The Greek word, it's a biblical word, basically I believe pronounced Anamos, which means wind or a stream of air, which suits this car perfectly. All of this aero-based design and styling and ethos. The whole idea of this thing is to be as fast as possible, right? To go and break records. And when I went out in the AMR Pro and that thing was pulling 3.2 G on corners, it was such an unbelievable experience. And the thing with the Road Valkyrie is that you can fit an even more extreme package to it that was an option to order. And then it's even crazier. Pop slicks on this thing and off you go. And I mean, even the standard car is already way quicker than anything else. Whatever other hypercar you're thinking of out there, this is faster. It'd be interesting to see the next generation of cars coming from Ferrari and McLaren very soon. Bugatti, of course, a little bit different with their new car coming up. But this is, it's like a pivotable, pivotal game-changing moment. This is like engineering taken way beyond anything else out there. A bit like the Bugatti Veyron back when that launched 20 or so years ago. It's just completely on a, different stratosphere. We've just been out to take a look at a car that costs one two hundredth of this, which is quite funny. Maybe we'll see some more of that soon on the channel. Who knows? But for now, I need to move the SF90 because the plan is to pop the Valkyrie here where it's going to look mega. So step one, obviously, is to unlock, unplug and get ready to pull this forwards but it's torrential outside still. It's been on and off all day, and right now it's particularly bad. Um, I'm gonna leave that down there for the moment, pack this away, because I'm probably gonna try and squeeze this, if you have a look that way, up past the Valkyrie. I think there's just enough space. And hey, playing with fire, fun way to do it. Let me hop in here and silently move this forwards. I was just getting into the groove. My music came on. It is a lovely car, this, and I would really love to take it out. But the problem with this kind of weather in winter is that you know if you drive it, it's just going to be filthy and you're just going to have to get it cleaned up and it's not worth it for a five mile drive. So, um, shoes back off. Time to get this started back up and then figure out turning it around and figure out getting it aligned nice and tidily in the halo bay. So this will be the first time I have ever piloted a Valkyrie in any form and it's gonna be at about two miles an hour, very slow and steady, and with concentration. So let me hop in there, start it, and get it tucked into the halo bay. We are in, carefully does it. I am very worried about that. I don't know what to call this part. Is that the barge board? That just feels really vulnerable. Anyway, look at this. Under the lights here. I should have put the steering wheel back on. I'll do that in a second. Oh, that looks so cool. That is exactly what that space has been for here. And now imagine being sat in there with the glass on. Obviously, we need to plug this in. I need to put my shoes back on, but we'll, we'll get to that. Walking around here without shoes seems fine seems like an okay thing so i need to plug this back in where i showed you earlier at the back then yeah where do we go from there i don't know maybe i'll try and figure it out right now this is the bespoke charger obviously that the car comes supplied with which is in a little bit of a tangle but we'll work this out here we go it goes under there and then bring it around and plug it in and kind of learn this as we go back here oh it's kind of warm back behind the exhaust as you'd probably expect. 
So normally with these things, we would pop that off, which is quite an unusual piece, maybe pop it on there. Then this is magnetic, and that goes in there. Yep, snaps in. Oh, there we go, that's clipped in. Then plug it in, and all being well, that should now turn on, and it should do some reading. I think that's in. Maybe I haven't pushed it in properly, you've got to give it a... Oh, no, there we go, that felt straight in. This should power itself up, and we'll see how that works. I'll figure it out shortly. All right, safe, safe and sound, calm and quiet when it's not running as well. We have parked the SF90 under the GT Black series then. So I do have a plan in my mind. The GT500 and the Focus RS should be there. The two Mercs technically should be together. And then this area has all become a little bit of a mess for the time being, but we've got the three hybrid Ferraris all plugged directly to the wall. They've got the same chargers, so technically you can change them around. This is my friend Max's SF90 Assetto Fiorano that's here. Not actually sure how long it's going to be here for. We shall find out down the line. And on the same vein, this is not going to be around for a particularly long time. Just a very short visit to have this car here at the moment. Hopefully it will come back. Hopefully there'll be an opportunity to go out and see what it's actually like. I am yet to drive a Valkyrie. I've passengered on a number of occasions, in fact. I've actually been in, I want to say, three different Valkyries in total. Maybe it's even four. So I know quite how ridiculous they are from the passenger seat but it's from the driver's seat that will be quite interesting to see either way i have to say an enormous congratulations to passen on this car because it is truly breathtaking just taking in some of the details and looking at this thing and like i say i've seen probably 20 valkyries prior to now and i'm still finding out new things about it i'm still learning new things about this car and it is so seriously impressive what Aston Martin actually managed to pull off. You've got to take off your hats to them because it's, it's absurd. It is frankly absurd. Anyway, it's here. The Valkyrie has visited the Schmuseum, the most epic car that's ever been here. This or Chiron Supersport. I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know where to begin. Oh, it's just cool. It's just absolutely cool. Anyway, let's wrap it up for there. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've enjoyed seeing and learning a little bit more about the Aston Martin Valkyrie. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers!